Pain. Some pain ahead. Pain for American families. What he calls some pain means putting people out of work. Joker here. Okay, so that seems to be the kind of the prevailing mood of the country these days. But you got to ask yourself, how much of that is hype meant to elicit a certain emotional response from us, get it our attention, and how much of that should we really be concerned about? <laughs> All right, this is going to be a little bit different video from me today, but I think you will still find it very interesting. This is the way I look at it. They are things that will affect me on a personal level when it comes to what's going on with the economy and all the other things that are going on in the financial system these days. And there are those that are kind of on the periphery. Things like U.S.-China relations, uh, the war in Ukraine, maybe you know what percentage the U.S. deficit was last quarter of current dollar GDP. I mean, all these things are important, but things like my job and having access to my cash are more personal. They're more down to earth, more relevant to me right now. I mean, those other things may affect my job, may affect access to my cash, but there's nothing I could do about US-China relations. There's nothing I can do about the war in Ukraine. And there's absolutely nothing I can do about the US deficit. I really have to focus on the things that I have some control over and things that I can prepare for that are very relevant if things should suddenly turn. And look, let's peel back the layers here and get down to brass tacks. Yes, we stack physical silver to protect ourselves financially, but really, really, if you boil everything away, what's left is our ability to provide for our families, to put food on the table, to secure a future that's gonna live beyond us. That's really what it's all about. So you gotta ask yourself when all this stuff is going on around us, how is that affecting your ability to do those things? But you know as well as I do that yes, this country was built on this strong ideal that we build stuff, we work because that's who we are as Americans. And that was beautiful. That was a great ideal for our fathers who felt personally connected to the companies that they worked for because their idea was as they worked personally for the company, the company would work personally for them. And as the company grew, the country grew and everybody had a part to play. But today, in today's society and the way things are structured, it seems like the main purpose that we have now is to make sure our babies don't go hungry. <laughs> make sure that we can provide them with some type of future. Now what happens is the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates. Businesses use that to go out and borrow more money, but they use that money to buy back stock and invest in technology that will eliminate workers and reduce employee headcounts. Uh, they use that money to give the CEO and other corporate officers big bonuses, and then eventually issue more debt and buy back more stock. So it's this endless cycle of things that are designed to increase the stock price rather than improve the actual company. Well, there's a lot of uncertainty around us today. And there's nothing we can do about that uncertainty, but there absolutely is something we can do about how we feel about being prepared for that uncertainty. And of course, you guys know what I'm gonna suggest. <laughs> I'm gonna suggest that you do something that's gonna help you financially beyond relying on fiat dollars and where they come from. Who owns those dollars? Whose dollars are we borrowing? The way quantitative easing works is that it's a lowering of the interest rates that leads stocks to go up. And so who owns the stocks? It's the people in the top, not just the top 10%, 1%, 10th of 1%. And so it increases enormously wealth inequality. But that idea seems to be a little gray now, it seems to be getting swallowed up by a lot of background noise. And so what we can do to kind of help ourselves be a little more focused about our own financial health 
and where we're going in the future is we have to do something personally to protect our finances. And that's got to be outside of these dollars. It's got to be outside of the system that we operate in because it seems anymore that the system really doesn't um, have our best interest at heart. <laughs> and that's not a critique of any particular person, party, or affiliation or whatever. It's just reality. It seems like the more we work, the more we have to work. The more that we put away, the more that we have to put away. And so we need to come up with a way that we can protect what we're putting away so that it doesn't go away. <laughs> and of course, something that's in your possession would be preferred over something that you have to seek permission to access. And so we still have to have dollars. We still have to do the things that we have to do to survive. And so think about that. That's what I do. I think about what I would do if I don't have access to my deposits. If, God forbid, I lose my source of income, my job, or some of the other things that I have, if those things were severely interrupted, how could I still make ends meet and do the things that I need to do, provide for my family and secure a future that's beyond me for the generation behind me? What could I do to continue that if my normal financial flow was interrupted or halted altogether. And so those things I think about, I don't worry or stress over them. You don't have to disrupt your life. These are just ideas. <laughs> so I saw this documentary, this PBS documentary, Frontline is called The Age of Easy Money. It's posted on their YouTube channel. Millions of viewers have seen it, so chances are you've seen it already, but on the off chance that you have not, I will leave a link in the description so you can go check that out. I suggest you do that. And so I got a little inspired to make this video, this commentary for you guys. I mean, I'm not a, a young guy anymore, you know, so I've been around for a little while and, you know, we've had dire warnings in the past. Pretty much all my working adult life, we've had these dire warnings, impending financial crisis and all this kind of stuff. But this feels a little different. And I know I'm not the only one. Or I hope I'm not the only one that feels that it feels a little different. This feels a little more personal, but I've been preparing myself financially for a while. Probably should have done it long before I started, but I've been doing it for a while and I feel pretty good, pretty comfortable about where I am financially and some of the choices that I've made towards our financial health. And I, I feel secure about that. And so I just want to share that feeling with you. I want you to have that same feeling. And I get that feeling knowing that I have things that have intrinsic value that is beyond the touch of this financial whirlwind that seems to be, you know, swirling around us right now. And that is a good feeling. So here's the pitch. <laughs> silver, physical silver gives me that feeling. Other th financial decisions I've made too, but this is a physical silver channel. So I'm going to share that part of my finances with you. Physical silver gives me that feeling because I know that I've put enough of it away to where I can rely on it for my financial health if something should go sideways and that's all that i'm saying here i mean my stack started with a single ounce and if i can do it pretty much anyone can do it and so i just want to share that with you you know maybe motivate you to think about it if you're not already stacking you know i'm not giving you financial advice i'm just saying that this is the things that i've done and so you can have that same feeling you know if you haven't started stacking silver yet i would say at least consider it if you are stacking silver, I'm just gonna say, I believe you're doing a fantastic thing for your future. You've made a wise choice. And if you post videos here on YouTube, chances are I've seen it. Thanks for the inspiration. And I believe it's just gonna help us to, you know, weather these storms that may be on the horizon. <laughs> anyway, if you stuck with me this long, thank you very much. I've reached 40,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. We'll see if we can do something special for um, you guys here in the very near future. And, you know, we're just going to keep the silver train rolling. You know, you are responsible for your own finances. And that's really all it's about. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Peace.